name is Diane Fritz and I'm a senior consultant with iTrack. So I've been with iTrack for over 11 years in a variety of roles. My main focus is the implementation of iTrack 365, including finding unique ways to help clients use iTrack in their day-to-day -day activities. So today's webinar is especially exciting for me as I feel it's a unique opportunity to expand how various users interact with both platforms of the portal and iTrack Dynamics. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat window and we'll get the, to them at the end of the demonstration. And if you could please mute yourself and turn off your video, we will get started. So today we're going to review a variety of topics of how iTrack uh, 365 and Microsoft Teams integrate. So we're going to start by talking about the explosion of Teams. We're going to review iTrack channels, so how uh, you can set up iTrack channels within Teams, how portal pages can be set up as tabs, how activities can also be set up as tabs, how Power Automate can send notifications within Teams, how Power Automate can also be used to be create a channel, and how you can actually set up a specific form as a tab within Teams. So ever since COVID-19, Microsoft Teams uses has absolutely exploded. So the beginning of um, uh, July, there was 13 million users. That's July of last year. There was 13 million users. Now there's over 75 million users. So the massive shift to remote work makes online collaboration and video conferencing absolutely essential. So the value Microsoft Teams brings allows those working remotely and in the office to easily collaborate with one another. So with iTrack integrating with Teams, you can now remain in the Teams platform and surface iTrack Dynamics pages and the portal pages. So we are actually going to jump right into Teams and see it all in action. Okay, so we're going to start off here where you can see I have the process flows. Um, so this site set up a team called the iTrack HSC team. So you can set up a variety of uh, different teams. It's really how your organization sees fit. Um, you can set them up based on roles. This is just an example I have set up. Uh, you can set up many channel, many teams with few channels within them. Uh, you might have just a few teams with um, very specific channels. I've just set up a few different options for us to take a look at and how they can be used. And we're going to start off with my first one of process flows. So this one's very specific. Um, we have a tab set up of process flows or forms. And as you can see here, I have it defaulted to the active forms view. You can change the view in here. You can see all the, the views are available to take a look at. And what we're going to do is we're just going to click on a form. So we click on that and you'll see it actually opens my browser. So we still have to interact with the form in the browser setting. You will notice it didn't prompt me to log on. That's because now iTrack supports single sign-on once you get into uh, the 415 release. So I come in here, I can still interact with the form as I need to, update it, whatever I need to do, move it to the next status. So everything I need to do, then I can come back into Teams. Uh, I've also added events for any of our clients that use events. Um, I can surface the events page as well, the events area of the portal um, to take a look at that as well. Uh, so then the next page I want to look at to so the next uh, channel is our activities channel. So here I have put in my actions. So these would be your corrective actions. So this is just an example. So I have an HSC task. I can go in here and take a look and I can update that action directly within Teams itself. Now this is new in our 4.17 release. Um, so these are, this is a very specific view for my open. Um, I've also created one called Active Actions. Now, what is really nice about this, and this goes along with our, our new portal page as well, 
um, for activities is that not only can I see my actions, which we've always been able to see on our activity page in the portal, but now we have a way of expanding that. So our supervisors and managers um, would like to see an overview of all actions that are applicable um, to their area or to an incident. We can now create views very specific to that so that they can see an overview um, of all those activities. You'll see there's different types of activities. I've just made the landing to be the, the form task or the corrective actions for that. We can name these any way we like. We're not limited to what the portal calls those pages. So um, I named this active actions. Uh, we can name it corrective actions, whatever we like. Um, whereas with the portal, uh, our pages are called things such as forms and, and whatnot. So then I want to take a look down here at managers and supervisors. Now, right away, we see that this is bolded. And, and if you work in Teams currently, you know, you know that that means that we must have some type of notification um, on here that um, the reason that it's, it's bolded, there's something that we need to take action against. And there's been two things that have happened here. The first is um, a Power Automate flow, uh, which is what we will be using um, in conjunction with workflows. It can do different things than workflows can in Microsoft Dynamics to send different types of messages. The first message that was sent is that uh, just a new incident has been entered in the status of preview. But then what also has been sent is an, what's called an approval. So this is an approval that um, has been sent through the Power Automate flow. And it's asking me, to either approve or reject. So this has been sent to the channel um, instead of um, by email, uh, instead of uh, us doing something within iTrack itself with a yes, no drop down. This is an actual true approval where we could prevent the form from progressing to the next status. Uh, and we could have actionable items based on whether we're approving or rejecting it. So just like with our other link, uh, we see a little bit of detail that it's been identified as a high risk. So we need to confirm that the details are sufficient to either approve or reject it going to its next status. So we can view our incident in um, the portal to make sure that we, um, we do approve this. So we can see it's an analysis. Do we want to push it through to implement those actions or do we want to send it back to preview to get additional details on that? And based on what we select here, uh, it's going to determine what status that form is going to move next. So we would enter our comments. Um, please proceed with investigation. And we would submit this. And then once we submit, we would have our Power Automate flow uh, update the form. We would update probably a, a comment section. Um, we would update our status to go forward into the, that implement actions. And we may even send an email to let um, the supervisor or someone else know that it has been approved and they may proceed with that investigation so that uh, we can see now see that we're starting to communicate uh, within Teams, um, which is really what Teams is designed for. It's to keep all of our uh, communication in one place. Uh, if we needed to communicate regarding something else, we can start our conversation there. So we can just continue that communication that we want to have. We have many items that I've added up here. Um, and a variety of items that I want to review. We just want everything that our managers and supervisors are going to touch in one place instead of having to go many different areas. For example, we have their Power BI. So many of you have Power BI that you use, but they have to go somewhere else to look at it. Um, we want that information easily and readily available to them. So I'm just going to click. This is a nice page to take a look at. So they can now take a look at um, their Power BI, which has their eye track information right in Teams. So they can take a look at that. We, we did have a process flows up here, but this is just demonstrating that we can have process flows in more than one channel. And um, 
we can have it right here for our managers. We may default to a different view for them. Um, you know, they can filter and they can look at the different areas that they have. The main key point is that everything that the managers need to do is right here for them. So another area that I want to touch on is, is items that they typically cannot see from the portal. So emails, um, they may be able to see them on the form, but we could have a section for emails. And then areas that they generally would not see are areas that are in dynamics. We generally don't train many of our users, uh, our managers and supervisors on dynamics as it is quite complex and you have to learn how to navigate within dynamics itself. You have to learn um, how to interact with the records. You have to learn where to find those records and it can be quite complex when they only need would need to do a couple things such as updating an employee. But here what we can do is we can get rid of all the confusion. We can get rid of all that navigation and dynamics and say we need our managers and supervisors to have the ability to edit employees. So let's just surface the employee entity. So here they are. Um, I'm a manager and I need to update Robert Brown's record. So I go into Robert Brown. He's been promoted. He's now a senior operator and I just need to save it close. And it's that simple. They just need to come to his record. They need to update him. Um, they may need to make um, some modifications or or add new facilities. So just like in the portal, they know that um, the red asterisk is what is required fields. So they're going to add uh, a north warehouse. So they know that they need to select a facility type. It's a warehouse. They might know some other information regarding it, um, but that's all that's required. That's all that you've asked them to uh, take care of. So they enter that information. So other information that they might um, manage, they might take care of adding accounts. Device pin, so that is for your um, iTrack mobile app. They could look up the device pins for their uh, direct reports. If uh, someone forgets their pin, instead of having to go to your iTrack administrator who looks it up in Dynamics, they could look it up for them. So there's many things that we could get our managers and supervisors uh, to, to look up and to manage items that would typically be left to someone with a dynamics uh, understanding and um, knowledge of how to of how to navigate within dynamics. We can now very easily train the managers and supervisors to do those items themselves with simply surfacing um, the views and uh, having them enter the required information, update the record and select save and close. So next item I want to show you is this one here, which is bolded. So you see 1088 fire, it's a unique name for a channel. So what I've done here is I have a power automate flow that when an incident has a category of fire or could be a different condition, uh, it creates a separate channel for it. So it creates a channel where we can start communicating, where when we say we, when our incident is a category of fire, we need a se separate channel because we have investigation that goes beyond what we just put in iTrack or it's part of what we do in iTrack. We have to gather evidence, we have to gather materials, we have other files we need to collect and we want it all to go in teams um, and to complement what we are doing in iTrack. So what I've done here is uh, I have the Power Automate flow at a certain status, create the channel and name it appropriately. And then we can start communicating. Um, we can have those um, uh, notifications come directly from our Power Automate flow. And then we can start adding our files and anything else we need. And then what we can also do is I can have the form directly in a tab. So I do not have to go and select and open it up within um, within a browser, I can start managing it in here. So we can 
continue, um, you know, if I had to update the risk, I could do that. Um, estimated cost. And I could save that. So this is just another option of how we can collaborate in teams on iTrack items. Um, so this is where we can put a very specific form as a, ta as a, a tab within a channel um, so that we can further investigate, we can collaborate on this one very specific incident. Maybe it was a high risk or it's one that we need to further investigate very specifically. Okay, we're going to move down to the competency and training. So this is um, another very specific role base. So this could be um, your competency and training uh, administrator. So everything we need right here, um, including an entity of a team record. So everything we've looked at so far has been viewed. So if I go, for example, to training task, this is the um, dynamics view of the active training tasks. If I go to competencies, this is the view of the competency records. Now, the competency and training administrator uh, may need to manage the employee reporting team, but not any of the other teams for uh, the I, for iTrack. So we don't need to clutter with the other teams. I just need the competency and training administrator to manage this one specific record. So what I can do is relate this one dynamic record for the team and they can just manage this team. So what I can do here is uh, I could select and I could say, okay, I don't need Kasim on this team but I do need Darren. So right within Teams, I can manage this, te this team record. And then we can go to job roles. So job roles is something that our competency and training administrator is going to be managing as well. So I can go into my all employees job role, for example, we can see the procedures that are related to our um, job role. And then I could go into my employee job roles. And this is where I would add an employee. So a new employee uh, has started. I need to add them to a job role. And I can quickly just, just add that employee. So you notice the one thing if you're familiar with dynamics and eye track with the eye track I'm you know I'm, I'm going to my menus and it, it is very simple to to navigate around eye track within dynamics but when I have all of these tabs up here um, taking me directly to the record itself I'm even more efficient in how I'm working and everything from a competency and training is right here I can put all of the areas that I need to go to right here at the fingertips of that administrator. Um, so everything that they need to do is right here. And then same with my administrator. Uh, so this would be more of my uh, health and safety administrator. So my forms administrator. So they would go to their form types. Everything they need is right up here for them as well. So if I look at our incident form type, for example, so that here we see our new inter our new the new unified interface. If you haven't been exposed to this, this is the new unified interface that we see. Uh, very clean, very nicely organized. It's um, it's really really nice once you you start playing around with it. Um, what we can do is we can open. I'll just open a section and can add a field. So everything we can normally do in Dynamics, I can still manage here within Teams, I can still go in, um, I can add a field, I can start to define what uh, I need that to be. 
So I can still do all the same functionality I do within Dynamics, but now I'm going to do it within Teams. So I'm just going to go to Forms. As an administrator, I'm likely looking at the back end of Forms to troubleshoot items. So we'll just take a look at Form 1075. So it's all our details, and if you're not familiar with the new interface, our form fields used to be below. Now we have everything runs across the top, so we can still do our search, so we can search for immediate actions taken. And then here's our related items, um, just like when we're in Dynamics, so I can go to Form Injuries, take a look there, there's our form injury. So really nice, really clean, really easy to work with. I can still troubleshoot my form just as if I'm in Dynamics, but now we're, we're within the Teams environment. So if we go to form business units, this is something that our administrators interact with quite a bit when they're managing the form business units. If I needed to update um, two for its name, I can easily update that as well. Now our competency and training administrator only needed to manage the one team. So we had uh, we had only the one team related where they went directly to the team where this administrator is going to manage a variety of teams. So this we would relate the view for the teams so that they could select the team that they need to manage to go in and um, add and remove the users as they need to. And last thing we want to do is we're going to go over to employees. And we'll just select there. And this is one little trick that I always like to show. So we're on Darren and uh, maybe I decide he doesn't need to be updated but we need to update different employees. So there's this little pop out you'll see throughout when you're on a specific record. And if you pop it out, it shows you the other records as well. So you can select another record. So in, in the older style, you used to have an up down arrow and you could only go up down by one record, but now you can select by many records. So I can select Michelle and now I'm on Michelle's record and I can easily update her. and close her out. Hey Dan, hey Dan. Um, uh, Mara is asking a question. Can you sure. please show again how the procedures are linked to the competency and training tab slash channel? Uh, he feels like he missed something there. Sure. Um, so, On so the company and training, what I did, this is from an administrator perspective. So I just have everything linked from the back end. So this is all the dynamics views. Um, so you could have the competencies. So this is everyone's competency record. Um, you could also do it from the portal. In 417, you can have the portal views as well. The portal pages, sorry, as well. Um, but this is handy if you're the administrator from the back end um, and you want to look at and view the records. So you could have the competencies. Uh, so I could open up the records. And if you're trying to troubleshoot from the back end, just like with forms when you're troubleshooting, that you could take a look at the records as, as well as having the job roles here. Um, instead of being in dynamics and looking at those records that way. Uh, the procedures from the back end as well can be handy. Um, procedures when you're in the portal, you manage from the portal perspective when you're writing procedures. Um, but from the back end, sometimes if you're making minor changes, it makes sense to do them from the back end compared to doing them from the portal because uh, we can only make changes to procedures from the portal when they're in a draft status. So if there was 
some very, very minor changes that had to be done that you could do in a published state um, to a name or just some very minor changes that we sometimes want to do in the back end. We can do it from the back end then, so you could have them them here as well. Um, and the team, so once you get into procedures, there's teams that you will have. There's a few different teams. I just put one here as an example, but there's a few different teams that you would use. So having them at the fingertips of that competency um, administrator is very handy. Is there's teams um, that they will have to manage. So it, it takes um, having a channel just for your or even a team just for your competency and train, training administrator is handy because it takes um, it takes the navigation away for any administrator when we can put everything in, in one spot for them. OK, so I'm just going to do a quick little recap. Um, so we can add our custom Microsoft Teams tab to display your iTrack forms, your corrective actions, and your form or your form tasks. Uh, iTrack records still open in the same iTrack UI your users see to, your users to use today. So that's really nice. There's nothing really new for them to learn. So managers can now complete an approval directly from Teams, which is just such a great thing that they can do. It's something that we've been wanting for a long time, the approval or the reject option. And we can post those iTrack notifications to Teams rather than sending emails when a new form is submitted or changes status. So that, that very simple notification, uh, this one here, you know, we can send that to a user or to uh, a team like, so, or to that team channel that can be sent to a user or to a team. So that's quite nice too, um, that we have the option of simply sending a very simple statement. So there's a few different options we can do there. So where is iTrack and Teams going? So most of what I showed you today is already available. So in 417, which is currently being built, um, the portal areas will be available as team tabs. So I demonstrated some of this today. So that was the events tab and the, the activities. Um, the iTrack forms is already available uh, in 415. So having the portal areas available will allow your users to access iTrack content without have within Teams without having to sign into the portal. So that'll be quite nice. So that's what we were kind of doing today where we were just in forms. We were just clicking the form and it opens it opens into the browser. They won't have to sign in because they, they already are. Um, so you can do that today in Teams and then everything else is currently being developed uh, and that will be ready for the end of the summer. I think uh, we'll end it here. Thanks for joining everybody. If you guys do have any questions in the future or if you're watching this video on our YouTube channel, uh, please message support at neosystems.com. The link should be in the description. Um, or if the name changes fully, came through, it'll be support at itrack365.com and we'll be able to answer your questions as soon as possible. A uh, big shout out to Diane for hosting this webinar and thank you to all our attendees and we will catch you guys next week.